bit of bad news our trusty jalopy car that we use for car camping the clutch went the other day um, we were out of cash so we didn't know if we'd be able to do this anymore Thankfully, my mum, who's an absolute star, funded for me to get another quite old 4x4, but it'll certainly do the job in the short term, and it's a great car. I'll show you later. We're going up again to the northeast. The main um, point of this weekend is to look for goshawk at Wycombe Forest. This is a bird that we have now seen, but from a very long distance. So. We're heading there to do that. Um, join us on the adventure. Here we are in Jalopy number two. Um, we've just stopped en route for a subway because we're both starving and we're heading to Scarborough Raptor Viewpoint for the night. See you there. Good morning, folks. We are at the Raptor Viewpoint, which is Viking Forest. Um, I've woken up, Kaylee's still asleep. It's about seven o'clock. And there's one other car here, other than us. Um, so when we're both up and ready, we're gonna go goshawk hunting. We promptly took a walk through the wood at Wycombe Forest, heading towards the viewpoint itself. Although it had been a windy night, it had settled quite well and the visibility was great. When we got to the viewpoint, there were a few birders there already who had seen a couple of goshawks that morning. We did wait around and scan the area for a while, but no birds of prey at all. After quite a while, we took a walk back through the forest to the open field behind where we parked our car, where in the past we'd seen birds of prey, but there was nothing there either other than a few singing chaffinch. There's Kaylee in the car behind me. There she is. Um, we're at the Raptor Viewpoint. We stood there for a while. There were a couple of gents who had been there earlier than us. Um, they saw two goths, so we didn't see any, unfortunately. Um, we haven't got a plan as such today, but we're going to see what's about. We'd heard reports of a King Ida that had been seen at Redcar consistently for a few weeks, so we thought that might be a sure thing. When we got there it was very windy and the sea was extremely choppy. We looked out onto it and there were plenty of birds there, lots of Idas, also some scouters. But initially, no sights of the King Ida. Kaylee scanned the sea where I started taking pictures of some of the lovely waders on the shoreline. There were some amazing sandling running back and two, and also some turnstone. I spent quite a bit of time trying to get some reasonable photos of the sandling. They were amazing little birds. Anyway, back to the King Ida. We scanned the sea for a long time. There were plenty of ducks on the water, but we couldn't see the King Ida. I took a whole bunch of pictures of some of the Ida that were really far out to sea and when we were able to look at the pictures and zoom in we found we had seen the King Ida. It was far far in the distance but it was there and we got it. That's a lifer. We're on our third bird. We're after a Palace's warbler which apparently has been seen this morning well, that was elusive, which doesn't fill me with much confidence. Yet, let's go and have a look anyway. This warbler had been seen on many occasions in past days, but always reasonably elusive. It was a lovely spot and we saw some awesome goose handers and some amazing small birds like blue tits and goldcrest. Eventually, one of the other birders there shouted, It's there, I can see it and we got some fleeting glimpses of this palace, this warbler, flitting through the trees. I got this little video and some pretty appalling blurred shots, but I was happy. This was another lifer. So, kind of a success with the palace's warbler. Um, it took a bit of a while to find. But there was a gentleman here who managed to point it out to us. Um, 
Oh, hey. He did get it. And we got it, um, which is a lifer. Woo! Um, so we've had all the three kind of mo more common leaf warblers visitors to the UK so far in the last 12 months, which is ace. Uh, I didn't get any pictures really. I've got a little bit of a video which I'll put up after this um, or before this. I don't know how I'm going to edit the video. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're gonna go before it goes dark hopefully to find a female ringneck duck an American visitor so that'll be cool if we find it hi folks we got it it's closed <laughs> that's a pain in the bum so we're gonna head for some dinners it's going dark soon and figure out if we stay around here for tomorrow or if we go somewhere else depends what's about and um, keep you apprised morning folks we're I think in Willington uh, near Durham um, we had a big conversation last night over some food about what we're going to do today um, we've decided to stick around the same areas we were yesterday with the traffic going past and um, I wanted to go back to the palace as well but see if we could get a better photograph and also to try and go to the ringneck duck we didn't get last night because the reserve it's on was closed so if we've got time we'll try and check something out on the way back as well all right i'm heading down to where the palace's warbler was seen yesterday we actually saw it yesterday which was ace but i felt like i wanted a slightly better photograph if it's still around if i can get one as well so i'm heading towards that when i got back to the place where the warbler had been seen there was no one there I looked up the river and there was a few other birders so I headed down there although it had been seen that morning it had been very very elusive in the back of some conifers so I stood and waited and watched the other cool birds around there were some bullfinches the ever-present robin and some other birds as well including a lovely wren that was in the undergrowth by my feet but unfortunately the palace's warbler didn't show again. Hello. I had a look at, uh, or tried to get some photos of the palace's warbler. There were plenty of birders there, but they'd only had very fleeting glimpses. So the, um, yeah, the palace's warbler, I won't get a photo of. Oh, well, not a decent one anyway. So I'll have to settle with the little video I took yesterday. Anyway, we're back at um, Low Barnes Nature Reserve, looking for the ringneck duck we couldn't see last night because it was closed. So fingers crossed, we'll find that because that's another lifer. There was a short walk to the hide at Low Barnes. When we got there, there were some birds about, including a few female tufted ducks. It was tricky to differentiate them from the ringneck duck. There were some other birds like coots, mute swans, and also there were some small birds coming to the feeders, such as reed bunting, chaffinch, blue tits and great tits. After being uncertain whether I'd seen the ringneck duck again, I went back to the car and then headed back to the hide to have a second look. This time the ringneck duck was pretty conspicuous. It had a few differences from the female tufted duck like a white ring around the eye. Regardless, that was another lifer, the third one of the weekend. So success, we think, with the ringneck duck. Um, unless they're female tufted, so I'm not very good at the identification, but we'll confirm when I get home. That could be the end of our bird watching today. We're going to head in the direction of home. Thanks for being with us. Hey folks, we're nearly back home. Just stopped off at the shop to pick up some bits and bobs. Um, we saw the ringneck duck, I've kind of confirmed it now. I went back and had another look. And um, the ones previous to that were tufties. So I've definitely got the ringneck duck. And um, we didn't do anything after that because Kelly wasn't feeling so great. So we've headed home. Thanks so much again for watching. We really do appreciate support. Um, please like, please comment, please subscribe. You know, do all that. Thanks so much. See you next time.